Hey, all the way with Alloway here at Outfest 2013 with the filmmaker of Big Joy about the life of James Broughton, Stephen Silla. How are you? Great. Are you enjoying the fest? Very much so. Awesome. So I know that you knew James later on in his life and he was sort of a mentor towards you. So uh, what was that relationship like with someone like him? Well, I met him uh, in 1989 at a Radical Fairy Gathering where we were assigned to the same cabin. A Radical Fairy Gathering? Yes. What is that? Radical Fairies are a group of uh, queer people who gather to explore the connections between sexuality and spirituality. Mm -hmm. And James was one of the bards of the early Radical Fairies in mm -hmm. 1979 and 80 when they mm -hmm. had their first gatherings. So he would read his poetry and uh, he and Joel w actually made a film called Shaman Psalm mm -hmm. at the second Radical Fairy Gathering in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So these are gatherings of creative people who get together and do everything from soaking in hot tubs to putting on talent shows mm -hmm. to having heart circles, which is yeah. a, a way of communicating about what's, what's going on on the inside as well as the outside of yourself. And that's where you met James for the first time. It is. And so that was a great cauldron in which mm -hmm. to meet him. Mm -hmm. And he was reading his poetry. I was, I was, in a way, more taken by his spirit than by his poetry mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. But as the more I've come to study his work mm -hmm. and making this film, I'm kind of in awe of his craft, both mm -hmm. as a poet uh, and a filmmaker. And you've assembled this, this amazing team to make this amazing documentary. So what was the process like when you decided to make a film about his life? Was that a challenge? Yes. yes. He died in 1999, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, I'm going to do something. I thought maybe it would be a book mm -hmm. because I'm a writer, mm -hmm. my background. But I've also done some uh, short public service spot mm -hmm. kinds of films. Mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of experience in film, but not much. So when I looked at his life, I said, it has to be a film because mm -hmm. he made 23 experimental films. He wrote 23 books of amazing poetry. But the images in his films are essential to tell his story. Mm -hmm. So I partnered up with Eric Slade, mm -hmm. who had made a wonderful documentary called Hope Along the Wind, the story of Harry Hay, mm -hmm. the founder of the Mattachine Society and one of the early gay pioneers who is also a friend and one-time lover of James Broughton. Uh, <laughs> and always interconnected. It's amazing. Uh, but he um, said, well, as long as I don't have to raise the money, I'll, I'd be happy to help mm -hmm. you with this film. So it was a great collaboration. Mm -hmm. And we worked very closely. We steeped ourselves in Broughton's work. Mm -hmm. And it was hard to decide which direction to go. Right. Well, and what I love about the film is that, you know, a lot of some of his most amazing and powerful writing is writing. So what was the challenge of being able to, because the film is a visual medium, um, bringing those words to life? I mean, sometimes there are voiceovers in the film, sometimes we actually see the words on the screen. So how did you navigate visually bringing his words to life? Well, I got the idea that we should try to do that by going to his archive at Kent State and looking at his own papers, like for the film The Bed, for example. My favorite. He had. Wait, tell us a little about The Bed, because uh, I don't think anyone's seen the it. The Bed is this 1967 film that was made in Marin County, and it starts out with a bed coming, rolling over the hills. Bed spins around, Adam and Eve show up in the bed, and then all these series of tableaus, all these different things that can happen on a bed happen. <laughs> it's so amazing. It's a 20 minute film with this kind of crazy m synthesized music mm -hmm. and um, lots of famous San Francisco people are in it. Lots of nudity. Mm -hmm. but Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> but when I looked in his file and he never threw anything away, I found these pieces of paper where he would just write one word like container or, Interesting. you know, all the beds a stage or you know just little phrases and I thought gosh it would be great to try to bring his, the sensibility of his writing mm -hmm. to the screen mm -hmm. so we do that both in his actual journals which appear on the screen mm -hmm. sometimes with other imagery and animated mm -hmm. form and um, in the animated poems themselves where we use mm -hmm. his uh, his words mm -hmm. along with 
imagery. Now, now making the film, I mean, James, he had a lot of friends, he knew a lot of people, um, and, you know, not being completely out about his homosexuality, there are people, I'm sure, who declined to interview or be involved in the documentary. So were there any hiccups along the way as far as not being able to get archival footage you wanted or someone you needed to interview? Well, there were people we wanted to interview who, for whatever reasons, declined. Mm -hmm. uh, people like Gary uh, Snyder and Michael McClure. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most of the people we interviewed just exuded about James. And I was kind of looking for somebody who would give... I'm a journalist, so I wanted to mm -hmm. show all sides of this person. Yeah. So I was kind of wanting to interview some poet who thought that his work was crap or something like that. Yeah. And I, I found a couple, uh, mm -hmm. but it didn't quite fit into the story to use that. But the best interview, I think, in a way, was with mm -hmm. his ex-wife. Totally. Because... I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah. And that was the first interview we did. Wow. Getting a hard step out of the way first. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was really quite miraculous. But his daughter, who refused to be interviewed, um, actually was helpful in navigating the interview with her mother. Wow. She, she arranged, you know, she called her mother mm -hmm. and said, would you be willing to be interviewed? Mm -hmm. And then she coached me on how to kind of talk to her. Yeah. So. Well, I think what's so amazing about that interview and James in general is that, um, to me, the story was that, you know, about accepting yourself and accepting the love you deserve. And it wasn't until late in his life that he did accept that he deserved love that he truly wanted. May have not been his ex-wife, but I think she understood that about him, and it's very hopeful. Um, so screening at some place like Outfest, where I think you are going to have an audience that grasps to that acceptance of self, um, is that a message that you're interested in, in kind of sending to everyone? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And James would say, you know, it's not about trying to fit into even queer culture. It's mm -hmm. about trying to be true to yourself. Like, don't make the film anyone else can make. Make the film only you can make. Mm -hmm. Follow your weird. This is American Sign Language for the word weird. The I know, I know w, sign language. Crawling across. Yeah, so that's been our motto. And we tried to do that, that in in making the film. Mm -hmm. um, but the to answer your previous question, the hardest thing was that he was not interviewed very much on camera while yeah. he was alive. So it Later was hard. in his life, but... Yeah, yeah. well, that, that interview was the one that I did five months before he died. That Fortunately, wow. Galen Garwood uh, shot this interview. At mm -hmm. that time, I had no idea I would be making a mm -hmm. film. But uh, he, he was, there's a 1977 interview, and that's about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was a challenge. Mm -hmm. We also, we really were looking for archive of the, when he went to the Cannes Film Festival, and we did find some, but we didn't find actual shots of him. So mm -hmm. we, we had to use still photos mm -hmm. to make that work. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how in documentaries... And he won an award, and there's still no footage of that. But that's it's right. the time period. Exactly. He won So the, what's kind of your... Um, what's interesting about James's story is that after winning Khan, he doesn't choose the path that everyone told him to take. He said, no, I'm going to make art I want to make. And it seems like coming out with this film that you're kind of presented with the same opportunity because you guys have done uh, the festival circuit for, you were at South By and... Tribeca. Tribeca. And now what's kind of the next step? Are you going to take this path or kind of do your weird... We're probably going to do something a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be a hybrid uh, mm -hmm. distribution. We, we don't have a distributor yet. We're still looking for one. Mm -hmm. We may find a distributor to do part of our distribution, but mm -hmm. we're really wanting to start a movement, a kind of big joy movement inspired by this film, mm -hmm. where people are having salons in their homes, writing and reading poetry to each other, making films mm -hmm. for each other. Um, this is something that Broughton and his friends did in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, they had a group called The Maidens, and they would dress up and write poems for each other and have mm -hmm. dinners and perform for each other. Yeah. Um, so. We're hoping that we can, this is his 100th birthday in 2013, wow. November 10th, yeah. and so we're hoping this whole year, 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. uh, that we can encourage special events around the country yeah. where people would show Big Joy, show Broughton's films in retrospective, yeah. have local artists. Mm -hmm. There's actually a San Francisco artist named Jason Jen who's doing mm -hmm. some beautiful uh, mm -hmm. Broughton poetry that he's wow. embodying in dance and mm -hmm. James would be just overjoyed to see yeah. that people are doing things like that.
So, so we, you know, we, of course, we, we're probably going to definitely do a DVD because we have so much great stuff that yeah. got cut out of the film. We'll do a DVD with extras that'll come out yeah. next year. We'll do a video on demand mm -hmm. sometime next year, mm -hmm. most likely. Yeah, well, I think the film is fantastic. So congratulations, and I'm Thank excited you. that, you know, there I have good friends in New York who are still performance artists who need to know about James. So Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank That's you. Big Joy for Outfest 2013.